Professor Clements with you as we uh, talk a little bit here about the tilt of the Earth's axis and uh, the seasons. And we've got this nice uh, graphic from Wiki Commons. Let's make the Earth go around the Sun a little bit rapidly. Again, the sizes are not to scale. The Sun is a lot smaller, the Earth is a lot smaller uh, compared to this orbit size. And, uh, orbit is a little bit more circular. We've kind of got an oblique view to uh, the orbit in this uh, in this artwork. But if you were up above the orbit, it would look a lot more circular. It's just slightly elliptical. Um, the Earth is about, uh, the distance from the Sun to the Earth changes about 3% during uh, the course of a year. And uh, we'll emphasize this a few times. The Earth is closer to the Sun in January than it is in July. And I just hope you heard that. The Earth is closer to the Sun in January uh, compared to the distance from Earth to Sun in July. In July we're further away. Well, why is it hot in the Northern Hemisphere in July? Why is it cold in the Northern Hemisphere in January if that's the uh, time when we're closest to the Sun? Well, let's get a little clue from what's happening on this Earth. We could, uh, I don't think I can stop it, but uh, if you kind of take the picture of the Earth over here, that would be close, this is January off to the left, and that would be uh, close to the Sun, but tilted away from the Sun, the Northern Hemisphere tilted away from the Sun. And over here in July, uh, closer, sorry, farther from, sorry, Yes, farther from the sun, but uh, tilted towards the sun. So let's get rid of this graphic and go to some still uh, frames, some still artwork. So here we have a picture of the Earth showing the tilt. Uh, here is our orbit around the sun. So way off to the left here would be the sun, uh, or to the right, depends on which season you want to model here. Uh, but the North Celestial Pole, up this way, the Earth is spinning. The Earth is... Uh, very similar to a, a large toy top that is spinning and the, the spin has an axis our north geographic pole is here above that on the celestial sphere we have the north celestial pole and right now the star Polaris is near to the north celestial pole in the sky uh, the celestial equator is the extension of the earth's equator out onto the sky and we have the northern part of the sky above the celestial equator. We have the southern part of the sky below the celestial equator. Uh, so we won't talk about obliquity, but uh, we will talk about the axial tilt. About 23 and a half degrees is the tilt of the rotation axis compared to being perpendicular to the plane of the Earth's orbit. So imagine the plane of the Earth's orbit being a tabletop instead of the polar axis being straight up and down to that tabletop the polar axis is tilted over 23 and a half degrees this creates the seasons on the earth and let's I have some other pictures coming up but let's go ahead and uh, investigate this right here suppose the Sun is over here now, suppose this is July the Sun is over here or June or August you know, roughly but it's the summertime the Sun is over here and the Earth is tilted, the northern hemisphere is tilted towards the Sun. That's going to give us more direct rays from the Sun. It's going to cause the Sun to rise in the northeast and set in the northwest. If the Sun is over here, right, so January, and the northern hemisphere tilted away, if you can imagine standing in Fremont, uh, the Sun's now going to be lower in the sky compared to July with the earth tilted this way the Sun is going to be higher in the sky notice our celestial equator here in the summertime the Sun is above the celestial equator it's going to be higher in the sky in the winter time the Sun off to the left the Sun is going to be below the celestial equator and standing here from Fremont looking out the Sun's going to be lower in the sky the sun's going to be above the horizon for fewer than 12 hours during the winter. It's going to rise in the southeast, the southeast, and set in the southwest and not get as high in the sky. We're going to get less direct sunlight 
The sun's energy is going to be spread out over a larger area, and it's going to be cold every year in January. The reason it's cold is because the Earth is the northern hemisphere is tilted away from the sun. The southern hemisphere has summer in January because it is tilted towards the sun, and uh, the sun is higher in the sky. The sun's rays are coming in more direct, not getting diluted, not being spread out on the surface. Uh, another frame of this, here's June solstice. Well, is summer in the northern hemisphere, but the June solstice. Um, so we have the sun's rays coming in more directly. Here's our north pole of the Earth. If you're standing at the north pole of the Earth, imagine the Earth spinning here and even a little ways away from the North Pole of the Earth, you're going to have 24 hours of sunlight. The sun's always going to be above the horizon, if you imagine spinning here. Conversely, down at the South Pole in June, on June 21st, we're going to have 24 hours of darkness as this Earth would be spinning in 24 hours, one spin. Uh, it's never going to be in this bright area. Uh, and one day we have spinning motion that uh, carries someone around in Australia, you know, they'll be in sunlight for a portion of the day, but less than 12 hours. Uh, someone up here in Siberia, they'll be in the daylight for longer than 12 hours. They just uh, have this little branch of darkness at the top. Uh, so we get this warm northern hemisphere because the Earth is tilted towards the sun. We have more direct rays hitting the Earth energy being more concentrated per square foot or per square meter, whatever you want to use for units, and the sun is above the horizon for a longer number of hours. Uh, the days are longer, so we receive more energy. Uh, we won't worry too much about these particular uh, locations. The Arctic Circle, that's worth knowing, uh, 66 and a half degrees latitude. The equator, of course, is worth knowing, zero degrees latitude. The Antarctic Circle at minus uh, 66 and a half degrees. Let's go to another slide. So December solstice. And we'll talk about what the solstice means in just a minute. But December 21st, and now our sun off to the left. The rays are coming into the northern, northern hemisphere at more of a glancing blow, and the energy being diluted over more area. So it's weaker, and the sun is now lower in the sky. Um, so we have shorter days and less energy coming in and we get the colder temperatures. Um, here at the North Pole, 24 hours of darkness. As uh, If you're standing on the North Pole, the sun never comes above the horizon as the Earth rotates here. And again, for someone up at this location in uh, uh, Siberia, Siberia's over here, but uh, they're mostly in darkness as the Earth rotates around. It only brings them into sunlight for a few hours a day. So those, that's the reason for the seasons. The season is dominated by the effect of the tilt of the Earth on whether the sun's rays are coming in directly or indirectly, directly during summertime, indirectly in the wintertime, and how long the sun is above the horizon. The sun is above the horizon for more than 12 hours in the summer and less than 12 hours in the winter. Um, so, equinoxes and solstice. Equinoxes occur roughly March 21st and uh, September 21st. In those time periods, we have the sun on the celestial equator on the sky. The sun rises directly east and directly west and is above the horizon for 12 hours. So, equinox, equal day and night, uh, September 21st and March 21st. The solstice times are when the sun appears to be stationary among the constellations in terms of moving north and south. And uh, June 21st and December 21st are the equinox dates. How do I know that December 21st is C and June 21st is A? I'm looking at the tilt. So the northern hemisphere tilted towards the sun. I know that's summertime, so that would be June 21st. Over here, northern hemisphere tilted away from the sun. That's December 21st when it's winter. With equinoxes, when we have equal day and night, the sun is on the celestial equator. And uh, solstice, 
the sun is at its either northernmost point or southernmost point on the sky. And again, as we've talked about before, the sun is traveling on the sky in a path called the ecliptic. From our point of view, the path on the celestial sphere that the sun traverses is called the ecliptic. Now, this is actual photography from space. Take a look at the snow cover as we go into winter. There's less melting, colder temperatures. We're seeing the seasonal effect. And there's a little bit more to it than just the tilde the Earth's axis, but that's the major thing. Now we're going into summer, and the snows are retreating in the uh, uh, northern hemisphere. It's getting greener. And back and forth we go. But the seasons are caused by the tilt of the Earth's axis, whether the Earth is being... Uh, the northern hemisphere is receiving more direct rays and the sun is above the horizon for more than 12 hours. That's our summer condition. And winter condition, when the sun is um, sending its rays to the earth, but they're not direct. They're, it's not really beaming down on us. The rays are coming in at a low angle and the energy is getting spread out over a larger area. And the sun is above the horizon for less than 12 hours. So there we go. Now in the reading guide that I've uh, made available to my students, um, you should be trying to answer some questions and uh, bring questions to class when you have them. Um, but I just go over a couple in this video. Now what data falsifies the hypothesis or theory that the distance of the sun controls which seasons are hot or cold? What data falsifies that theory? Well, it's the fact that the Earth is close to the sun in January, but the Earth's uh, temperature in the northern hemisphere is colder in January. Um, so that would falsify the theory that the distance is in control, distance to the sun. What is in control is the tilt of the Earth's axis and giving us more direct rays and having the sun be above the horizon for longer than, uh, than 12 hours. Um, Mars has similar seasons to the seasons of the Earth because it has a similar tilt to its axis, its rotation axis. Um, and it does have seasons that are roughly twice as long as the seasons on the Earth. We'll talk more about that uh, when we talk about Mars. Mars takes a longer time to go around the Sun. Um, and Mars has more extreme seasons because its orbit is more elliptical than the Earth's orbit. So Mars does have more uh, change in its distance away from the Sun, and that plays a role, a little bit more significant role, for Mars than it does for the Earth. But we have seasons because of the tilt of the Earth. The Earth does not rotate straight up and down compared to its orbit plane around the Sun. The Earth's axis is tilted. Sometimes our northern hemisphere is more facing the Sun directly at summertime and tilted away from the Sun wintertime. So keep reviewing that and uh, keep asking questions.